Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mr. Super Oz, I just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. Thank you. After that, open rolls. Enjoy the video. If you could, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. It's Sunday, it's the pay-per-view. It is the first Alpha Entertainment Worldwide branded event. It is Backlash. It is the big show after the granddaddy of them all, WrestleMania. And uh, well, how does this show open, good sir? So picture JR said everything Oz just said, and that's how that's how we started along with the fireworks and everything. And then we started My baseball meeting. cap is a cowboy hat. There you go, there you go. And we start immediately with the glass breaking. You know how it goes. Austin's Austin's music hits the speakers. Crowd goes wild. Austin's stomping out to the ring. A little less confident than he normally seems. Mm -hmm. Almost like he's questioning himself. Like he's taking everything Paul Heyman said, what, two weeks ago by yes, now? Yes, it was to heart. Ago. Yeah. Well, no, the beautiful thing about our booking, whether it was our WrestleMania uh, last month or this backlash now, both times, we are starting out so hot. Yeah. We opened WrestleMania with the undisputed title match of Jericho and Triple H because yeah. we closed the show with Hogan and Rock. Exactly. Now, we're opening with Stone Cold Steve Austin versus... Brock Lesnar. The most dangerous man, the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. There it is. Of course, Heyman accompanies Brock. And Brock just stares down Austin like he's some, like he's some dirty dog. Like he's an old... He's old yellow, waiting to be put down. And uh, these, these two go out, they have a match, and basically, picture that John Cena match versus Brock Lesnar, and that's pretty much what this match was. Oh, you mean the one where John didn't get any offense? Yeah. Like, I, 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 so, it's funny that you say that, because that is great, but the match I thought of oh, it's was not, it's, Hogan versus Brock on SmackDown, where... Hogan is bleeding, right? And Austin's, Austin's a great bleeder. That's probably a good one because it's close then, to this time period. And then and then it ended with a bear hug where the blood is pouring down Hogan's face. And Hogan's not nearly as good of a seller, in my not opinion, anywhere close. as Steve Austin. Nah. So if Steve, who is now a pro at gigging, is bleeding and and, and, and getting, it goes out to the bear hug, that way he doesn't have to put his shoulders to the mat. Oh, he wasn't going to put his shoulders in the matter. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm just uh, just as a, a theoretical. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but I don't care. What, maybe it's an amalgamation of those two matches. Yeah. But we we it's we, a mix. We, the, the point is. Yes. The the most dangerous man proves why he's the most dangerous man in this match. Yes. Because he's beaten Steve Austin's tail. Um, like probably midway through the match, uh, like I said, Austin gets busted open. He's bleeding, and as Jr. says, he's got a crimson mask. By God, and uh. At this point, Brock's just throwing him around. And but let's be honest, especially at this point in his career, Steve Austin's injuries are piling up. People know his injuries are piling up. And his confidence have, is broken, too. Yeah, his Both confidence in real is life broken. and in, in the storyline we're telling. Yep. Brock's, Brock's looking dominant. And Austin hits a surprise stunner, cover, covers uh, Brock. Brock kicks out of one. <laughs> kicks out of one. Love Steve it. Steve Austin is in complete disbelief. Confidence drops even more. Brock gets up, nails him with the nastiest clothesline you can think of. And then Heyman looks dead in Brock's eyes. Brock hits the F5. And then Heyman says, stop, stop, don't pin him. Finish him. Finish him. So, I don't know if you remember this, but Brock used to have a different submission before he had the Kimura. He had the Brock lock. And 
I don't know if you remember the Brock Lock, but it's literally just Brock takes the leg of his opponent, slaps it around his huge traps, and just flexes and wrenches and tears the ligaments in the knee Well, and, and while Austin's, standing up. And Austin's known for having bad knees, too. Terrible knees. So Brock is shaking around. Austin's knocked out from this F5. Of He's course. not even moving. Yep. So the referee is like, stop, we're done, stop, oh, that's too it. much, I it's too it. much. That's so good. And the show opens, this is less than 10 minutes. Uh, and the only reason this goes 10 minutes is because Brock absolutely dominates Steve. Oh, I love it. Like, I love Steve, but you have to do this. Oh, you have to do it. especially since he'll be gone soon, so I really have to do this. But this is his last pay-per-view, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Uh-huh. So... But yeah. oh, oh, that's so good. But yeah, so Brock absolutely dominant. Comes out looking like, well, the next big thing. Yes, exactly. Looking like the most dangerous man. <laughs> and so, um, WWE never did this, but in AEW, both real AEW and our fictitious AEW, um, we are going to institute a policy that when there's blood on the mat, we're replacing the mat. Because yeah. I think that is one of the most genius things that AEW does for the health of their... Wrestlers. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, I was going to say talents, but yeah, wrestlers, exactly. So, yeah, that's true. Post- Brock's to be in there, too, yeah. Oh, exactly. And so, post match, um, Paul does all the talking for Brock in the back. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Austin's carted off. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe not full on stretcher out, but like, nah, he's I think help- he can't walk. So, exactly. He can't uh, walk. He's unconscious. Exactly. So, I, I, um, I say a stretcher does. Yeah, stretcher's, stretcher's fine. I ain't mad at it. But, um, but, uh, Paul is cutting a promo for Brock in the back, uh, and he, at the conclusion Actually, of let's, let's make it top of the ramp. Top of the ramp. That's that's good. Actually, because it's so it's so Austin three sixteen to exactly. do it at the top of the ramp, and you exactly. can see Austin being taken out, that, that, it, just like Jake the Snake Robert was all those years ago. <sighs> it's it's perfect. It's perfect. Wrestling's a circle. <sighs> so Love it. what I was gonna say is though, at this point, and the importance of this is and, at this and, point, and Brock, visualize. Austin's blood all over Brock's yes. body. So at this point, Paul just does this. At, at Which is signifying that Brock has defeated Al Snow on television and now Steve Austin on pay-per-view because now it's two. Yep. Uh, it's important because after Undertaker defeated Austin at WrestleMania, he did this because he had ten victories at WrestleMania. Exactly. And so... But the the reason we're doing this is so they can take the mat off of the ca- the yeah, canvas. Yeah, so I have the time to change and, and do that. Yep. But uh, it's it's both for the cleanliness and for the storyline purposes. Exactly. But after the promo, the carting off, and the canvas has been changed, yep. we now lead to our second match or Josiah's second match tonight, which is a that tag team. Stars our universe. So. Oh, exactly. Uh, so uh, a tag team encounter where the man formerly known as Meat Sean Stasiak teams with the man formerly known as the One, which uh, meant nothing. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but 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 nowadays he is known as Daddy Ass. Uh, but yeah, so Daddy Ass teams with uh, Meet Sean Stasiak. God, they both need better names right now. Boy, um, don't they. And so, um, they're they're taking on the reunited too cool. Yes, and this is um, I'll, I'll be honest. The crowd the crowd's crushed. They oh. their, their hero just got murdered. Absolutely. So they need something to build them back up, which is why I reunited too cool, too cool, and I'm glad Oz did it. The uh, way he suggested, which was a great suggestion. Can, uh, can I ask your opinion on um, yeah. Rikishi's attire? Like his, with his eyes being up. Yeah, that would be the that would be the attire I speak of. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm up to changing it. If that's what you're trying to suggest. I would like to keep him in his bad bad man leather gear. Okay. Um, reason being is it's very um street uh cool. Uh, you know, big quiche, like I said, and Scotty Tuhati can have very similar uh, uh, dress attire coming down. So, big quiche, little hottie, uh, they come down to the music, the dance, they both take off the, 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 the accoutrements, the coats, the, the glasses, the glasses or whatever, the extra. keep it all to the side, but then they wrestle in uh, leather pants uh, like Rikishi wore when he was a, a bad, bad man cool. in uh, Storyline. Because that's that. basically how I had him when he was with the Most Dangerous Alliance. Okay. And I just prefer him that way. I understand that Vince liked having his cheeks out. Oh, uh, that's because Vince liked it when Rikishi sat on people's faces. That is correct. But but yeah. I, I just think that this is a a polite, uh, a better a better <laughs> visual. Better visual. <laughs> well, listen. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. I don't, I don't really care what they wear. So, I'm, thank I'm, you. We got, we got other attire suggestions. Throw them at me. Because, um, 
Unless it's like storyline wise, like I have them dressed like this for a reason. I don't. I really don't care what they have cool. to wear. So yeah, the only reason is I don't like seeing his ass. You know, well, well I was gonna say his dimples, but <laughs> <laughs> all the craters on the the cheeks. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, um, nice little ten minute match here. Uh, two cool wins. Um, it's their first match back, so obviously they have to win. Uh, Meat and Billy can take a loss. Well, and and this since they already did this loss can. Uh, further help get them to try and discover who they are. Exactly. So, um, when Stasiak went on a losing streak in this real-world timeline, he he went crazy and called himself Planet, Planet Stasiak. Stasiak. Yeah, I do remember and that. And so, maybe Planet Stasiak can be orbited by something done. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll come up with it later. Exactly. And what I'm saying is, like, to make that... Basically, it won't happen in this episode. Make their alliance make sense. Right. Um... But yeah, so two cool wins. They uh, they pull a fan out in the, from the crowd, and they're all gay. They're all excited. Put the glasses on them, and they just boogie down. Gets the gets the crowd back in the mood for the pay per view. Love it. Assassination, which is why it's booked the way it was. <laughs> Assassination. That's, yeah. that's such an accurate term. <laughs> but um, next up is uh, Kurt Angle versus Chris Jericho. As as you saw last week, uh, Jericho in Kurt's mind cost him the match mm-hmm, against mm-hmm. Christian. So, Kurt wants some revenge, so he and Jericho come out. This is our first, like, match match. This is our first 20-minute right. like, classic. Yeah, because the, the opening match was to establish, and the, the, the secondary match was to get people over that devastation. But yeah. this one, like you yeah, said, this, this, this is going to deliver. Exactly. This is going to be the match that people are like, oh, my God, this is incredible. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, amazing back and forth between Kurt and Andy. You've seen a Kurt and, Kurt and Jericho match, <laughs> exactly. so... So many good ones. Yeah, there's. I literally can't think. Of, can you think of a bad one? I don't. I don't know if Kurt Angle's ever had a bad match. That's what I'm thinking. And Chris so, Jericho. Oh. If, if he does, it wasn't his fault. So. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I love Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho's amazing, man. But uh, Jericho, Jericho and Angle are doing their thing back and forth. Ankle lock walls at Jericho. Uh, ankles, Angle's uh, just wrestling Jericho. Jericho's a. Uh, Showing that high flying cruiserweight acumen that he uh, had established in WCW when he was world champion, and um, the match ends uh, with Jericho nailing a lion insult and pinning Kurt Angle, giving Kurt his third loss in a month. And Angle, much like the other two matches, is lost, confused, doesn't know what to do with himself, can't believe that this has happened again, and is starting to question what. What what he needs to do to turn this around, and he he walks out, and he's heading to the back. And um, no, let's say that for another second. So I I'll, I'll come back to my thought a little later. Next up, first woman's match of the show, number one contenders match between Trish Stratus and Lita, and again, these two have never had a bad match. Oh. And, and I can remember one where one had a broken nose, the other one busted their leg. So uh-huh. they still did it. Yeah, and they, they still had a banger. So I, I guess like the the vibe I'm going for here is the first main event match on Raw mm-hmm. type type situation, minus Lita almost killing herself. Right. But um, these these two have a back and forth banger. Um, it ends with uh, Lita uh, nailing the moon saw on Trish. But big match, no losers in this one. Crowd loved it. Everyone applauded. Had a ball. Um, it's great stuff by those two. And as uh, Lita's walking out, uh, Jazz's music hits because she wanted to give Ivory the opportunity to come out second. So well, Jazz, not just that, but she has showed such reverence and 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 respect yes. to uh, all the women within this division that mm-hmm. it would only make sense to me that she would want to congratulate the victor exactly. herself. Exactly. So she comes out, they shake hands on the top of the ramp, said, "I will see you down the line." And then Jazz makes a And that's big confidence, too. That's yeah. big confidence. <laughs> big confidence. Jazz holding the world title above her head as the dominant champion that she is. And uh, gives Ivory the chance to come out second. The crowd applause because I, I, even at I this gotta point, tell you, I got to tell you, I, I, I got to interrupt real quick. Yeah. If, if money was no object, like if I hit the lottery, mm. I would love to animate this universe. Ooh. Like just so many visuals of this. Like yeah. when. When you're saying like, this is the picture, yeah. Right? When you're saying that uh, that she's holding that title, I'm seeing it in my mind. I'm like, right. Hey, if I got if I got the money, I would animate this I'd entire war, this, this whole I'd... this whole show. Oh, it'd be so good. It'd be so good. I, 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 I honestly wish this happened in real life because I I could 
see all this like being a thing. Absolutely. Well, and I don't know if you're going where you're. I don't know if, if, if you're I'm taking where Kurt going. where I think you're taking Kurt. But I have I have a vision of where he could go in my mind, and it's just so fun. It makes yeah. me smile. Yeah, it's great stuff. I mean, we might not be thinking the same thing. That's okay. We might be thinking the same sure. thing. Sure. But either way, it's, it's going to be great. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so Ivory makes a way out. Yep, so Ivory makes a way out. I uh, have another great match. This one's about 15 minutes or so. But um, it's um, it's very back and forth, but it, it, it ends as you expected it. Jazz hits her triple power bomb. The crowd's it's getting a little bit more behind her. They're doing the, oh, one. It's like, oh, two. And bang, three, and that, that does it. Great, great match. Um, Jazz, again, much like she did with uh, Molly, shakes Ivory's hand, thanks her for the great match, raises her hand in respect. Uh, Ivory vacates the ring to give Jazz her moment. And then uh, we uh, cut to the back, and uh, Kurt Angle's just sitting in the in the trainer's room, getting ice on his back from those walls of Jericho attempts. Can, can can Jonathan Coachman walk up with a mic and and want to talk to him? Yeah, and be like, I'm like Kurt, Kurt, how you feeling? How you feeling right now, Kurt? And Kurt's just like, you don't get the f away from me, I'm gonna kill you. And he walks away, and and that's when Goldust, our hardcore champion, walks in and just like Coach Coachman, come on, man, this is this is embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. This man is dejected. He's lost match after match after match. Like he is feeling pitiful. Look at him. He's down in the dumps. Look at him. His hair doesn't even shine the way it used to. Man, almost looks like he's bald. I, 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 Thing to try and grab gold dust, but his back is still killing him, so he can't. <laughs> but like gold dust, because Kurt can make this funny. He's Kurt. he's great at comedy, absolutely. Great, he's great at uh, situations of comedy. And the reason I have these tee he joke moments is because it's our U.S. title match next, and it's the hardcore Raven Rule match, Rob versus Raven. So Rob comes out as the U.S. champion without a U.S. championship. <laughs> yep, and he is visually. Like, P.O., like, very uncharacteristically upset, yep. Rob Van Dam. And Raven comes out like he is the world champion. He's got the belt around his waist. Um, he's got his classic Raven gear on, mm -hmm. and he's he's doing the he's doing the gimmick. Yep. And as he's uh sitting in the, you know how he sits in the uh, corner? In the corner, absolutely. Yeah, and he's bragging. He's not even paying attention to Rob, which is how Rob can sneak up on him with a Van Terminator. Whew. Or Van Dam. What's the one coast to coast? Is it Terminator or Daminator? Uh, Van Daminator is when he's hold, the opponent's holding a chair, so it's Terminator. Terminator, all right. And, yeah, so he kicks kicks the snot out of him. And Raven didn't see it coming. And Rob, that's that's our hot star that gets well, him Well, and, and the best part about that is, so you, you see Raven in the corner, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and all you see is Rob come into the shot, and it's not to the replay that you see where he was at. Yeah. And that's the beauty of well, what you're doing. Yeah, especially because Raven, you know, his whole interest is in the dark. Mm -hmm. So, yep. no one... If you weren't looking at Rob before the lights went out, you have no idea where he's at. Yep. So that's how he caught him by surprise. And they, these shoes just fight. They, they fight. They fight all around the arena. It's Raven's rule, so it doesn't matter where they're, where they're at. They fight in the crowd. Crowd's losing it. Um, obviously, there's blood because it's Raven's rules. Um, but uh, but it's, it, it's absolutely insane. Raven hits a Raven effect on the announce table, but has to drag Rob back into the ring. In order to pin him, mm -hmm. he gets the one, the two, Rob kicks out. It's a big pop from the crowd. Raven uh, goes to get a uh, pick any arc or weapon, a bat, two by four, etc. Well, I know one thing that he was big on doing was setting up a chair in the middle of the ring and hitting a drop toe hold. That's how he busted, busted, Scotty Riggs' eye yeah. Yeah, and getting him into the flock was hitting a drop toe hold where... Riggs' head hit the chair, and it took out his eye. Ooh, and yeah. so a chair is a, a very uh, appropriate weapon for him to grab. Thank you, Oz. So he gets the chair. He sets it up in the middle of the ring. And he lines Rob up, goes for the drop toe hold. Rob reverses it, hits a drop toe hold of his own. Raven is yeah, knocked selling. out. Yeah, yeah he's, he's selling. He's knocked out. Rob, quick as, a, quick, quick as lightning, Yes, hops up to the top rope, nails a five-star frog splash, and... 
retains. I almost said wins, but mm. retains is. But he US still wins title. to retain. Yeah, yeah, wins to retain his uh, U.S. title. Great match. Rob is still U.S. champion. Crowd goes wild. Beautiful Raven. title too. Oh, gorgeous title. Love it. And I was going to show it on the screen right now. Of course. <laughs> and then brings it back. Um, but uh, Rob does his thing. Everyone's loving it. Um, of course, they changed the mat for. Um, the second time of the night. The second time of the night. And uh, while they're doing that, we get a backstage clip of uh, Triple H warming up for his match with Christian. And by warming up, I mean he's sitting on the couch eating popcorn. Like, ah, oh, this is going to be a cake can, walk. Can we, can we have Arn Anderson uh, in this segment? So, Please. in my mind, uh, which I already stated in the video, we, we make reference to Arn Anderson, right? And, and so I would love for him to be in the shot. Because what was Arn's big thing with Cody in AEW? It's like, oh, you, you're, you've got lethargic. You're, you're more worried about roads to the top than ti- you know winning titles. And so I would love for Arn to just not not say it yet, but just mm-hmm. think out loud. Or, or to, to think, and you'd see on his face, he didn't say it yet, but just think to himself that it's, he's, not, he's not carrying himself like the... He's not carrying himself like the top guy. Like like the top, the exactly. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, I just Rick, think, Rick's not there tonight for whatever reason. And so having Arn be there because, like I said, he was referenced to, mm-hmm. then I think that would be smart. I like it. Cool. Toss it in there. I just need the segment so they can change the mats. Absolutely. But that works. And then meanwhile, you also got Christian in the back. He's 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 uh, tr- doing push-ups, uh, stretching. Yeah. Going, going over his... Uh, his Actually taking things seriously. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, this is the most important match of his life. Because it is. Because it is. It's, 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 <laughs> And um, great stuff there. Uh, then we got uh, obviously your tables match: Dudley's versus uh, Holly and Saturn. Uh, this is not nice, quick match. Goes about ten minutes. It's it's yeah. a Dudley's table match. You kind of know how it's gonna end. Well, and and when when you see the two teams of Mark or Holly and Perry Saturn, and then you see the actual team of the Dudley boys, you know who's winning. Yeah, <laughs> it's not hard to yeah. figure out. And it's not even a knock on Holly or Saturn. No, it's no, just, no. They're not attacked. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Dudley's won that, and about 10 minutes, Dudley tough drop to the table on Holly. Sure, makes sense. Makes sense. All right, then, uh, you got the big build-up, the big anticipation, uh, who's the announcer at this time? The ring announcer? Yeah. Willie Garcia. Thank Dang, you. really, in 2002? <sighs> Man, she was there for a while then. Yeah, she she was awesome. Prolific. Man. Love, love, big fan of Lillian, so that works for me. Yeah. Well, Lillian announces, it is now time for your AEW Backlash main event. Crowd goes wild. Christian! And, yep. Christian! Now, here's what's funny. So, at this time, yes, Christian's been kind of acting like a valiant baby face, but all throughout this month, he's technically still been kind of booed by the crowd. Yes. He's still a hill. Well, it's the same, it's the same basic concept with Triple H, yeah. who's technically not done anything he'll like, but has been acting more and more nefarious. Yes, he's done one babyface thing since he's been back, which is on your SmackDown. Yes. So, and even then, it was it, he just won a he, match. And even then, he was babyface adjacent. <laughs> exactly, I like and it. And actually... Even in that match, how it ended, because Hogan could have just got the win, but he begged for the yeah, match. Yeah, it's like, I got to do this. I gotta I'm, do this. I'm, I'm the, the champion. <laughs> I'm the champion. I got to get it. So, I love at it. least in these entrances, right, Christian comes out as a heel, and Triple H comes out as the valiant baby face who all the crowd loves. Yep. And it is wild. Like, the, the energy is top notch. Aaron tells him, you better take this kid seriously or else you're going to be in trouble. And Hunter's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Tag team specialist tag, right there. Tag team Arne specialist Anderson. Arne Anderson talking about tag team specialist Christian. No problem. Oh, my goodness. And these two proceed to have a 25-minute banger. And so the extra special thing, like, if if they allow Arne to cut the promo tonight, and we can even save it until tomorrow if need be. Yeah. But if you allow Arne to cut a promo, putting over Christian, he can say, this man comes from Canada, yeah. the home of Bret Hart. Mm. Like, we may not agree with Lance Storm, but that guy's a, a world-class athlete. Yeah. Edge, our our most recent Intercontinental Champion, you mm-hmm. cannot, and brother, yeah, you and cannot brother. you cannot discount him. Yeah, you can't. You cannot call him a scrub, because yes. he's not a scrub. He wouldn't be here in this position if he was Oh, my God. I don't, I don't. Kurt Angle to get to this position. I don't know, but my suspicion is Triple H is retaining tonight. Yes. So, if, if Christian tomorrow... Gets told by Arn Anderson, 
you know, continue to believe in yourself, kid. You come from the land of off. Okay, I'm continue. Blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me finish the yes. show, and yes. then we'll we'll talk about the future. Yes. All right. Because you're you're still up next after anyway. Yeah. Exactly. We're all like next. immediately. <laughs> um. So yes, like I said, back and forth. The way this match starts, the first probably five six minutes, our Triple H just dominating, and very similar to Kurt Angle, pie facing Christian, kicking him while he's down, throwing him out of the ring. He like like even, a baby face would do. Yeah, like a like, like classic baby face would do. And Triple H is soaking up this, at the time, adulation from the crowd. Because they're loving it. And then that's when, and then Christian starts fighting back. He's he's, he's pushing through. He's he's finding his moments. He's hitting roll-ups. He's he's nailing his uh, reverse tornado DDT. He's uh, catching Triple H off guard with a drop toe hold. Here or there, and Triple H is starting to get mad. He's starting to get pissed off. He's, he can't believe that this this kid's hanging with him. Do you know what this reminded me of? What? Triple H versus Shelton Benjamin. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm glad you picked up on that. That's that great. Was so good. But um, Triple H decides he, he, he's done effing around. Nails Christian with a spine buster. Covers him. Christian kicks out at one. Crowd, ha! crowd can't believe You are a big fan of that spot. It's a good spot. It is a good spot. I'm not going to do it all the time. But, but, but just, you did it in the beginning and the end. So mm-hmm. it, keep, it, yeah, it, it, it keeps it's a bookmark. Yeah. It keeps the center. Uh, uh, not bookmark. It's a... Uh, Bookend. Yeah, Bookend it. Exactly. Like yeah, it. but it, and, and it's not like he kicked out of the pedigree at one. He kicked right. out of the spine buster. Exactly. So, but it's still Triple H's second biggest move. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to be like, I, what? Yes. And this is when the crowd starts getting behind Christian a little bit. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. The kid's, the kid's going to do it. So Triple H is like, okay, we're done here. I'm finished. I'm wrapping this up. And he and he's, kicks him in the gut. Links up for the pedigree. Christian does a classic reversal where you know you lift mm-hmm. out bridge, of bridge. Yep. Yep. And hits the bridge. Gets a nice, nice near fall. A nice two point nine nine nine. I love Triple it. H kicks out. And then Triple H hits the high knee. And the back and forth is insane. Crowd's going wild. Say so Triple H picks up Christian. Goes for a scoop slam. Christian shaking, wiggling. Gets out. Links one arm. Links the second. Turns. Kill switch! Because I'm not calling it the unprettier. Ever. For sure, for sure. So it's immediately kill switch. Yes. Rolls him over. Covers Triple H. One, two. Foot on the ropes, but the ref hits the three. The crowd loses their mind because they think it's a title change. But then referee, probably Earl Hebner. Sure. Because he's the only person I've ever seen that always miss this. It's like, no, 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 no pin, no pin. Don't ring the bell, don't ring the bell. Foot but on the music's ropes, already foot playing. On ropes. Yep. The music's already playing. Christian yeah. thinks he has it. Yep, and it's at that moment that people realize, oh, my God, I want Christian to win. Oh, my God, Christian's great. The crowd's losing their mind. Triple H gets up slowly. Um, Christian goes for another unprettier. And Triple H gets his arms out, pushes Christian into Earl. Yep, I knew that was yep. I knew it was coming. Yep, nails a low blow. Turns him around, hits the pedigree, pedigree. Yep. Pretend I can speak. And then it's Earl. Been a long show. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long show. Earl, Earl um, wakes up just enough, counts a little lethargic. One, two, three. Solidifying Triple H's wow. hero turn. 